ni yafqahu qawli Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh and a very very good morning to uh, our special guest today Prof Emerita Datuk Dr Asma Ismail How are you Prof Okay alhamdulillah Alhamdulillah thank you so much Prof for uh, accepting our invitation alhamdulillah uh, I would also like to uh, welcome uh, Prof Ami uh, the director of RMC uh, my fellow colleagues at the RMC, um, as well as uh, all other academicians and researchers uh, who are joining us this morning. Alhamdulillah, thank you so much uh, for making your time. Alhamdulillah, um, it's really a pleasure and an honor. And uh, I would like to also take this opportunity to wish everybody Happy New Year. <laughs> if, you know, if I still can do that, 2022, Allahu Akbar, yes. All right, so... Um, Thank you, everyone. I am uh, Dr. Adlina Arifin. Inshallah, I will be your moderator for today's uh, program. Okay, so um, so what is what is this program all about? Okay, um, the title of the program is My STIE 1010. Okay, an integrated policy to revolutionize SNT. Okay. So the idea is, um, so, so let me just explain to you the purpose of RMC holding this particular program. Uh, as all of us have known recently, Mohe uh, has uh, given us the announcement of the opening of two grants, uh, FRGS and PRGS. And if we were to look at the guidelines, the new guidelines of these uh, grants, you will notice that there is, um, a particular component in the guideline that says that your proposals need to include one aspect of the my STIE 1010. Okay, so because of that requirement, uh, the RMC feels that it is very, very important that all of us here uh, in IIUM uh, are clear in terms of what is this M my STIE 1010, okay? So that you to ensure that we are not only we are not only uh, giving good quality proposals, but also proposals that will meet all the requirements which has been set by Mohim. So for such purpose, Alhamdulillah, we have here today with us Professor Emerita Datuk Dr Asma Ismail. Um, she is the current president of the uh, Academy of Science Malaysia, all right, and she is the backbone, all right, the main uh, figure in the conceptualization of my STIE 1010. So we are definitely honored and, um, you know, uh, to listen to her and to be enlightened in terms of what my STIE is all about, as well as how are we going to align my STIE when we are writing our proposals to ensure that you know there will be high uh, frequent or high rates of uh, acceptance uh, by the um, by the evaluators so uh, without further ado um, i would like to um, respectfully uh, pass the floor to uh, professor professor emerita dato asma uh, for further deliberation Okay. Right. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Salam sejahtera and very good morning to everyone on the virtual platform. Thank you very much, Dr. Adlina, for the kind introduction and a very good morning to Prof. Amir. Baru uh, nampak yesterday and uh, today we're having another meeting again. Okay, I'm glad to see all of you on this platform. Um, and um, thank you for um, uh, for the kind introduction just now but i would like to correct it is 1010 my stie bukan M, um, my stie 1010 so um tak apa to small small minor thingy so let me um uh, share uh, and of course uh, I echo you um, by saying uh, Happy New Year uh, to all the clicks on the virtual platform uh, and hopefully 2022 may be a better year uh, for all of us. It doesn't seem to be so, uh, so very early in the year uh, with all the floods and the climate change effects that we are seeing. And this is among the topics that 
I will be discussing uh, today as well, uh, because we have to be relevant uh, to cope with the situations in the country. So let me share my uh, screen. Uh, okay. And um, I appreciate it, uh, Dr. Adlina, if you can see the slide, can you just let me know? Yeah, you can? Yes, All right, yes. Thank you. All right, thank you. Okay. Um, <clears throat> Uh, as uh, we, um, the topic that was uh, given to me by RM RMC, uh, I'm, I'm glad that this time around, um, RMC uh, Dua ada, RMC Kuantan, Dr. Nazri, Dr. Widya, um, and also RMC in um, Gomba uh, together in this. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I've given this topic before um, to I IUM, and that was the time when um, this was not yet part of RMK12. And of course, some of you were listening with one ear and some of you was like, oh, what is this talking about? And, you know, don't know, don't care. Well, now you know you have to care. So, um, uh, and I'm glad that um, uh, Mohe has also uh, incorporated this. Of course, 1010 My STIE is noted by Academy of Sciences Malaysia uh, under MOSTI, uh, but we wanted it to be a one nation approach. That means uh, all ministries, uh, if they want to use now the grants from the government, uh, need to also be incorporating the 1010 My STIE, Malaysian Science, Technology, Innovation, Economy. E is not enterprise, but economy. Yeah? So I will gladly uh, tell you what this is all about uh, so that we can now move uh, forward. Okay, um, this will be the scope that I'll be covering about the big picture, why we need to come to 1010 My STIE, uh, addressing especially the innovation chasm that we are seeing, how we plan to bridge the gap, um, and uh, 1010 now becoming the change maker in R&D in RMK12. I will share with you about the 12 Malaysia Plan document and also creating an impact um, because IIUM is the only university actually that have a TNC um, for responsible research and innovation. Most of the TNCs are TNC P and I. So nobody has put the word responsible. So I am, you have the vision to do that and it's now becoming the in thing as far as the world is now moving is responsible research and innovation. Um, but you know, talking about responsible research is not good enough. You gotta show it, you know, um, to have a TNC that is responsible research. Okay, fine, but you gotta show it to have an RMC that's championing that. Fine, but you gotta show it. So this is what this is all about. I think this uh, morning I would like to share how you're gonna be able to show it, right? So um, a little bit about a 1010 my SDIE itself, and. Um, as a case study, um, Prof. Ame, I'm using IIUM Kuantan uh, to strategize, but uh, I think you can use the same concept to find what is it for Gomba uh, and what is it for Gambang, what is it for all the various campuses of uh, IIUM. And of course, to talk about uh, the Malaysian Grand Challenge grants because you're already familiar with the FRGS. Um, uh, first thing, seeing the big picture of what this is all about. Um, COVID-19 um, pandemic basically has taught us that in order to remain resilient, we need science basically to power our economy. And I think you have seen that uh, most companies that have shut down um, not using STI um, to, as part, you know, becoming online, that's STI. So basically, uh, most companies who do not do that have already faltered and COVID has wiped out all of these companies. So companies that have not shown agile response all will, will die. So to ensure Malaysia remains competitive globally, the government continues the efforts to mainstream STI uh, basically as a driver of economic growth in its transformation plan. So if you can see from, from the time of the first um, Malaysia plan to the current Malaysia plan, which is moving um, uh, now to humanization economy, and that's why responsible research and innovation becomes now a keyword um, uh, to move, uh, and why Tansri is advocating for humanizing education or humanizing higher education. Now, uh, I hope this is apparent to you because this is the way forward as far as the world is concerned. And, and this uh, hopefully will enable uh, in all, what I want to say is that in all of this Malaysia plan, whether you can find it or you can't, uh, essentially STI is underneath. It is a backbone behind all of these um, uh, plans that we have. And this, uh, we hope that uh, with the current uh, RMK12, it will enable Malaysia to become a high-income, high-technician, 
um, de and a developed country based on knowledge. This is the thing, right? Um, based on knowledge as well as competitiveness. And this is what I'm talking to the researchers today, um, what this is all about. So with the rapid change of technology, brought by industry 4.0, uh, we need to instill innovation in our industries uh, in order to move uh, productivity. And um, you know, just for your information, Malaysia's current GDP is at RM uh, uh, 1.2 trillion. And the question is, can we enhance it? And if we can enhance it, how can we enhance it? Um, and throughout the time, if you study the past 63 years, uh, the technology is the fuel of the future economy. And we find that we do have pockets of excellence in terms of our industry. This is a study done uh, for EPU, um, where we have we, we look at the 21 industries uh, from the academy, and then we say, okay, what are the pay setters, what are the adapters, the imitators, and the laggards? And we find that um, the EE industry, those in engineering would be glad to hear this, um, the EE industry is among the foremost uh, in terms of being a pay setter for the country, the IT services, the automotive, the chemical, petroleum, pharmaceuticals, um, financial services, even education services, not the university, yeah? this is education services um, are doing well as a pay setter. Then of course we have the adapters, the imitators, and the worst one that we see here is the lagard. If you look at the lagard, what are the lagard industries? Agriculture, construction, textile, and health. What does that translate to? Men's basic needs are what? Food, shelter, clothing. Food, the most lagat of them all, shelter in construction, clothing in textile, and of course, taking care of your health. So if you see this, you find that this is a mega improvement. How can we be so good in all of this? At the end of the day, when we come home and we need to have basic food on the table, it is the most laggard of them all. So the question is, how do we move our economic sectors up the value chain? And if to move forward, we therefore need to address the pressing challenges uh, with the whole of government uh, strategic approach. And the question also is, can we enhance the innovation capacity of the industries by design? Design. That means, can we have now all this help the laggards to now move upwards as well? And um, this is a study done in twenty um, uh, done in December twenty twenty uh, by World Bank uh, that uh, shows the innovation capacity of Malaysian firms uh, compared to East Asian countries like China, Philippines, Cambodia, Mongolia, uh, Indonesia, Thailand, and so on. So we find that if you look at the orange bar, uh, in terms of innovation, our Malaysian industries is not so bad. Lah. Uh, in terms of innovation, maknanya, is it producing innovative product or is it just being innovative in the process? The thing is with the Malaysian companies, they are only innovative in the process. The product is still the same old, same old. Um, but if you look at the um, blue, that means the percent of firms that, um, that introduce new indigenous technology that is, capacity, that is basically ours, uh, we compare even to Myanmar, to Laos, to Indonesia, to Thailand, and tak payah tengok pula sini. Bottom line is that we are the lowest. How can we, a country that have received so much money in terms of grants, all right, compared to even Indonesia, I mean, we are the most luxurious in terms of grants offered to our researchers, and yet we are the worst as far as indigenous technology, that means coming from our researchers to help move the industry. And of course, the percentage of R&D that the company spent uh, on R&D, a Malaysian company, uh, is not there. What do you expect? If we are not changing our industry and 98% of our industries are actually SMEs, Right, how can they put in money to do the R&D? So most of our companies are actually trading. And if you look at uh, the capacity of our companies uh, to adopt and adapt foreign technology, oh, we are up there uh, with, with the other countries as well. So notice that we, we are doing, you know, like 23 close to Indonesia. So uh, what is this saying? That means our industries do not really trust the kind of science and technology and the research impact that, I mean, basically we have not enough research impact lah from our researchers, that the industry rela uh, bawa masuk foreign technology uh, rather than um, uh, using the technologies um, or the discoveries uh, done by our local uh, researchers, right? So the question then is why is this happening in this country? 
after 63 years. And this is because of the innovation chasm, whether you like it or not. Since the sixth Malaysia plan, like the government has also recognized that the largest source of R&D wealth actually come from the public sector because all of you are all clamoring to get more and more FRGS, more and more grants uh, to come in to do research in order to publish at the end of the day to get promoted. Uh, but at the end of the day, did the country benefit from what you are doing? This is the question that we need to ask. And did the rakyat benefit from what you are doing? So therefore, uh, we find that um, there is an innovation chasm in the sense that our researchers in the public, especially in the public universities, the 20 public universities, did not very much transfer the, the, their discoveries uh, to create the indigenous technology to the private sector. So essentially, we have a chasm. Chasm, maknanya there is a lubang besar uh, between um, a huge gap between the knowledge generators, which is the academia, and the people who want our knowledge. Um, uh, that means uh, the people in the industry and the community uh, who now would benefit from the knowledge. So the innovation chasm essentially is the inability of academic research to actually reach the market as products and services. And therefore, if we cannot commercialize, ladies and gentlemen, then it will not hit the people. Bringing whatever discovery you have direct to the people is not good enough because it will benefit only the people around you. What about the rest of the world that probably would uh, you know, benefit from the research that you're doing? So unless you commercialize, this is not going to work. And therefore, it will not reach as many people and create the kind of impact that we want. One. And that is why research from Malaysia, uh, from the academics, actually show lack of impact. Right? Not not saying that we don't have enough papers. We have like what two hundred seventy thousand papers or something like that. We rank number twenty three in the world uh, in terms of number of papers. But if you ask the question, how many of these papers are in the top one percent or in the top ten percent? Very very few. And how many of these papers generate knowledge out of these um, papers that you are producing? Even even smaller. So therefore for several instruments have been used. Okay, so how do we try to bridge the gap? So we, we try by following what the West have suggested to us. Uh, why not we set up technology commercialization agency, la, innovation office, la, ataupun intellectual property management office, la, which we have, you know, every RMC or every university um, IPTA have all this. But still the impact is very low. Commercialization success is only 5% coming from the public universities, right? So, and, 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 and if that is the case, Therefore, most of our universities have uh, the above, but with limited progress due to the lack of project or product entering the pipeline. So this is why we need to ask why. You have all this office, the lawyers are there, but are they actually filing for claims and, and getting the patents uh, for you? So what, even if you have the patent, is it moving off the shelf? This is the question. So um, that's why in, instead of each university beating the drums to say, oh yeah, we have this number of patent, we have this number of commercialization, that's why I, I show you the slide of our industries compared to the rest of the East Asian uh, countries. We are nowhere as far as our indigenous technology uh, being used to, to bump up uh, the industries in the country. And, and this disparity is because, number one, ladies and gentlemen, the lack of trust between academia and industry. Today, even if I'm talking, I probably will make a lot of people uncomfortable in the sense that they want to do research, but essentially it is the research that they're doing is what the industry wants. So that's why I've said from the very beginning, the research needs to be done from T0 together with the industry. T0 maknanya at the time, before you even formulate the kind of research, you need to be discussing with the industry, with the quadruple helix or quintuple helix uh, to be able. So if you want to write for a new grant or something like that, please ensure that you are already discussing with the people <clears throat> so that the, the research that you're going to write about is going to be relevant. And I think I've taught you guys uh, all these things before already. So there is a need for more engagement between academia and industry and to do this in a collaborative manner. I think this um, silo-based uh, working two or three people together has got to go uh, in the sense that um, you, I, I, I hope that RMC is teaching the right things 
to the young academics because um, get, uh, getting them to work in silo with, with two or three people is not the way forward now. They need to work in a collaborative manner. From young, if they are already trained to do this, they will become collaborative when they become professors. But from young, if they're already in silo, they will not be collaborative um, because they will be very uncomfortable and they don't know how unless they really go forward to do that. So the need for policy also needs to be there from higher education uh, to link academia with industry. Um, so this is what the World Bank is saying. Actually, there is no policy to say that there is KPI to the Knight Chancellors to enhance uh, commercialization success rate, but doesn't say that you need to work with how many industries and so on and so forth. So there is a need actually to create an ecosystem. Uh, this is what RMC is all about, to create that ecosystem, to narrow the translation gap from the R&D to economic development. So in short, we need a policy that actually linked the R&D priorities to economy. And this is the national STI policy that was launched in December of 2020. So um, this is the first time that the country has a policy uh, that covers not mostly, but the whole of Malaysia that says that uh, officially link STI to economy. So that's why um, above, uh, that we hope that with this, um, uh, it will now close uh, the, the gap or rather bring the gap uh, narrower lah, uh, to uh, allow for academia industry linkage. And the how we plan to glue uh, the academia and the industry together is the 1010 My STIE framework. So that is what, uh, if you want to know what this is all about, why academy muted this is, is to, to show you how we can now glue academia industry together. So in moving forward, post-COVID-19, we basically need to bridge the gap by performing responsible research that is impactful. And I hope you understand, when you say responsible research, meaning it is human-centric, right? That means you are taking the human in the center. You're taking care of the human. If you are not careful, if you're not careful, you will be technology centric. And this is what I worry uh, I worry uh, about the young academics uh, who are now moving. They are so into technology that they are driving that technology. Let's say they use CRISPR, they are moving CRISPR without thinking what is CRISPR doing to the human? Remember, technology is only an enabler. All right, it is only an enabler, it is a tool. What you need to see is how is it impacting uh, the human. So the human must be in the center of the research proposal if you are looking into that. So we need to actually build the RDCIE, Research Development, Commercialization, Innovation and Economy ecosystem with relevant talent development uh, in order to move. So that postgraduates of the future, you see, it all begins with the like, academics. If the academic their mindset have not changed, then what are they teaching to the postgraduate? So you're going to create a system of people who are very silo-minded if we continue in this track. So we need to now have collaborative R&D platform uh, uh, in order to work. And this is why um, we need to work in an integrated multidisciplinary or transdisciplinary collaborative ecosystem. Maknanya, it cannot be the sciences working with the sciences. Even the sciences itself, um, between campuses, between um, upper, uh, IUM Kuantan and IUM, because engineering is located in, um, Gam, uh, in, in Gomba and medical is located. In. If you study what is a collaborative ecosystem, Professor Amir, you will find that the collaborative ecosystem is usually the one that goes forward is the marriage between health and engineering. But unfortunately, we are uh, divided between the Kuantan campus and, and Gomba. Huh? And so there is a need, therefore, to make sure engineering works together with medicine, works together with allied health, work together with dentistry, with nursing, to now be able to move uh, innovations that can now uh, be the kind that, that we are looking for to go forward. So we need to work on niche areas that address the relevant local and global problems. And therefore, this is what I'm trying to say as time for universities and academia actually to rise to the challenge. So um, uh, COVID-19 has taught us that, uh, as we say, for the economy to survive and recover, uh, it has to be powered by technology. And if it is going to be powered by technology, that is not enough. The people working and using this technology need to work in a collaborative manner. And what this collaboration is not a matter of 
one person there and another person in Gombau, another person in Kuantan or in Gambang and work together. No, that is not called collaboration enough. What we want is a collaborative ecosystem uh, being created. That means the whole interactive together with the people, together with the finance, together with the policies um, that now allow for this collaboration to happen together even with the KPI that was now pumped onto the deans or to the pengarah. All this must, so is the whole ecosystem in the university uh, need to be looked into, not just asking people to do collaboration. So, uh, and, and with new business models, models uh, essentially for the industry because the industry also cannot work with the same old same old and um, to, to thrive and basically um, we need to do constant foresighting um, to, to remain uh, basically relevant. So therefore impact driven um, responsible research is the way forward to actually move Malaysia's uh, high tech industries and enhance the quality of life of the right yet. And when we talk about impact it means not academic impact, but impact that can show beneficial change uh, of research uh, in the real world. And that's why there is a need um, to close the gap uh, to create this impact, because traditionally assessment of impact is focused on academic impact, but in reality, the impact measure. See, we have a mismatch. What the university promote are lecturers who produce high age index and uh, high Q1, Q2 papers, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, that is okay to ensure you to become a domain expert. That means if you are going to be an expert in EE or you're going to be an expert in medical, you need to show uh, uh, the, the, the papers in that, right? But as you, as you now become a professor, as you move towards becoming a professor, you need to be able to show now impact. And this impact means it is now outside the university. It's no longer about... Um, you having a higher and higher age index because at the end of the, uh, the day, what is the impact that you have created? That means the, who have the uh, used the knowledge that you have generated? So, so basically we are seeing now um, a mismatch between the KPI of the lecturers, which is about output and the need for Malaysia's um, net recovery plan, which is about outcome. You see, so uh, this is the mismatch that we see uh, in, in promotion of the lecturer is all about output. Um, but in the measurement of what a uh, country kata as a good university, uh, Malaysia kata, a good university is a university that create impact, uh, that has outcome to the rakyat. But because we keep on thinking of an international uh, ranking, uh, that's why bila you tengok international ranking, they are going to move for output rather than uh, impact. So that is why among things um, that Tan Sri is asking all of us to sedar um, that uh, a university um, in Malaysia is supposed to be able to um, apa, enhance the national objectives and, and create apa, the uh, impact uh, kepada rakyat. So I'll be touching on this uh, as to what is the requirement of um, a public universities and universities in Malaysia uh, tomorrow in my talk on autonomy and governance of universities. So if you're interested um, to know what Malaysian university is all about, because sometimes our mind is very much controlled by the West because we have been trained in Sheffield or we've been trained in Indiana. And at the end of the day, we come back with that kind of thinking, not thinking um, the fact that why we are here in a Malaysian university and what actually is your job as a lecturer in a Malaysian university. University. So if we now close this uh, mismatch, you will find why in the higher education blueprint, we advocate for community engagement, uh, because this becomes the, uh, the way you can now create an impact, right? Because this is the journey to impact. But what happened in the universities, the most of the academic program consider community engagement as PM to P. Yeah? Uh, basically, it's something on the side, it's just an elective. But in actual fact, the higher education blueprint require the community engagement to be part and parcel of the curriculum itself. All right. So when you now have the universities to now go in, the students go into the community, the lecturers will go in as well. And this is where you learn what exactly does the community want. And that is how you go back to the lab and actually design what is now relevant to the community. So impact is not about the process, but it's about the result. And um, you know we face the same problem with the evaluators of grants. 
All right. Most of the time, they're looking for your methodology. They are not looking for the outcome of your research. All right. So this, this is also another mismatch because this is what I'm saying that the kind of training, now we are retraining the evaluators of grants. They have to be credential in order to evaluate FRGS or whatever. So that now they're looking for outcome rather than they're looking for the process. Most of the time they look at the process. Is this robust enough? Is this the methodology okay? Does it meet the objective? But at the end of the day, you know, you write under the coconut tree, what is the outcome, right? Because you say, oh, you can copy paste. The outcome will benefit this, benefit that, but it actually never show it. So this is where now uh, uh, grants, especially in Malaysian um, grant challenge grants, will not look very much at the process, but they will look now for the outcome. So impact is not about how to develop the vaccine. That means the discovery, all this is like what FRGS is all about uh, to make the vaccine, but it's whether about the, whether the vaccine that you develop is able to reduce or not the spread of the disease that you want. That means it's very results driven. So results driven impact matters because it will focus us on the overall purpose rather than the process of the research itself. Wow, this is going to be a different mindset change, even for evaluators of grants uh, located in IIUM, uh, okay, and even the whole Malaysia. So that's why um, we need to undergo this change. I think COVID has taught us it's time to reset higher education in the way uh, it should be done. And when we reset, then it's only then only we can see the best return of investment uh, and the return of value that we want. So it's therefore time for universities to perform responsible research. And, and please remember, perkataan responsible research and innovation is not about output, it's about outcome. And that is why uh, if IIUM kata leading the way, then please lead the way in showing the other public universities how to do it. Okay. Um, the 1010 My STIE framework is now a change maker for R&D in RMK12, right? And um, the, it's mooted by Academy Science. Uh, I'm uh, sorry, uh, Prof. Adina, I'm not the creator of it. The creator of it is uh, Professor Mahendran uh, Naya of Sunway uh, University, uh, but it is done together uh, with the uh, fellows of the Academy. Uh, Mahendra is also a fellow. Uh, so basically, this is what we mean by collaborative. Uh, we work together and um, as president, I of course champion this to the National Science Council and to the High Technician Council, uh, chaired by the Prime Minister, went through a lot of um, uh, uh, debate and discussions with a lot of ministries. This is what it is all about to actually bring a policy into the country. Yeah? So basically, um, uh, it serves as an integrated tool to transform Malaysia into a knowledge intensive economy by design, not by chance, and actually move Malaysia up the global innovation value chain so that we now become a high tech nation that emphasize on um, inclusivity uh, aligned to the shared prosperity vision and the SDG. That's why I think IAUM in the, um, in the upper, uh, arena of SDG, you are actually now already thinking about inclusivity, you are thinking about the right alignment now that is very much aligned to the shared prosperity vision. So as I said, the, it focus on ecosystem uh, rather than on the technologies. And this is just an example, not example, this is a page of the RMK12 book. So if you are interested to see evidence-based, this is a page from the 12th Malaysia Plan book uh, to show uh, uh, about uh, what ten, uh, the framework is all about. So in RMK12, there are nine focus areas and STI has been identified as an enabler for all the nine focus areas and the research grants will be uh, for the identified niche area that I will be discussing. All right, so how now do we come to STIE framework? Uh, how do we come up to this uh, 10, 10 my STIE? So uh, Academy has uh, had done uh, ESET, the emerging, emerging Science Engineering Technology Studies. Um, uh, and we did a foresight study up to 2050. Um, for your information, um, Malaysia, because of what Academy had done, was acknowledged by the UK uh, system uh, when they analyzed all the countries in the world. Um, Malaysia is one of the country that uses foresight to actually now plan uh, for the, the kind of master plans that we want to have and the kind of science that how to go forward. So um, uh, I'm glad we did that uh, at the academy because now at least Malaysia is on the map. So we mapped 
um, what are the emerging science, engineering technologies uh, for the country, Malaysia, in order to face up to 2050. And there were about 94 technologies that's being identified. But the 94 technologies, you don't even remember what you ate last night. How can you even remember 94 technologies? So what we did then is to now um, uh, compare that with the research capability of Malaysian uh, researchers. We analyze the emerging declining technologies. We look at the global patent analysis. We look at the industry analysis and we look at the global trends. And when we look at all of that, that's how we um, compress the 94 technologies into uh, 10 technologies that is uh, of utmost uh, importance that will bring you up to 2050. Mananya, if your research is using any of this technology, inshallah, your research will remain relevant up to at least 2050. But if you're using research that you brought back from from your country, uh, from the country that you study from, and then you say, okay, you learn about CRISPR, and you come back and you say, okay, can I use CRISPR? Well, in terms, in terms of bioscience technology, yes, CRISPR is very relevant. But if you learn about some other technology, and then you come back and you say, I want to use that technology because that's the technology I learned, please adopt and adapt. Huh? Uh, that uh, now is 5G, 6G, we are talking about sensor, we are talking about 4D, 5D printing, advanced material, advanced intelligence system or AI, um, cyber security, um, augmented real analytics and data discovery. We're talking about blockchain, neurotechnology and bioscience technology. So people in biotech, uh, whatever that you have learned, you are still on as far as uh, uh, biotech is concerned, it's still very much relevant up to 2050. But more important, these are the socio-economic driver. This is the science and technology driver and this is the socio-economic driver. That means Yes, you can work on a lot of things, but if you want to now move Malaysia, this is the 10 socioeconomic that will say need help and you, you will be very relevant if you're using this, uh, if you're working on this um, uh, socioeconomic drivers, like for energy, for business, finance services, for culture, arts, tourism. If you are in the health campus in Kuantan, medical and healthcare, you are on all the time, so it's not a problem. But if you're in engineering, you better start thinking about smart technology system uh, in, uh, in uh, new uh, next generation engineering. Uh, uh, if you are into this transport, uh, smart cities and transportation, uh, water and food, if you are in the sciences and you're doing climate change and biodiversity, you will start thinking about environment, uh, biodiversity, uh, education, uh, all of us are involved here, and agriculture. So agriculture is no longer for UPM, uh, hello. That means now we are asking people who are now involved in AI, in um, CRISPR, in biotech, all now to get, please to get involved in the creation of the um, agriculture industry because we are moving now to precision agriculture. So what it means is that um, if we now have, uh, if we are now into one technology, that means into AI, if you are into AI, you actually can move any, you can contribute in energy or in business, you can move in any of these socio-economic driver. But if you are in uh, agriculture, if you want to move agriculture, that means if you want to move this socio-economic driver, it has to be in the combination of all these technologies in order to move. And you need to work in a multidisciplinary manner, transdisciplinary, same with this. If you are working on artificial intelligence, it's not about innovation, it's about from fundamental to applied to finally to the translational. So don't be very silo-minded. That means, oh, mana boleh ni kita nak buat ni fundamental tak ada lah. Kami ni orang fundamental. Kami orang fundamental, hello. In knowledge, it is in a continuum. Please do not put yourself, I'm fundamentalist, I am applied, I am innovation, I'm translational. What, what is it? Knowledge is in a continuum. So when you have this kind of uh, thinking, itu yang sekarang spoil, eh? kata, oh, mana fundamental? Mana fun in order to drive AI, you have to have the fundamental. In order to apply AI, you have to have the developed and the applied and uh, the platform technologies. So basically, this is what we need. We need knowledge to be in a continuum in order to drive any of this aspect. That means to say, you need to work together to even to do uh, a part fundamental for AI, you need to have a lot of different disciplines coming together, mathematics, uh, 
physics and all, all also to come in. And if you now want to work on agriculture or any of these, even for medical and healthcare, you need to have people from the different disciplines to now come in, especially from the non-science discipline to also come in because you cannot create an outcome. If you don't, if you take yourself, if you see yourself, you're human centric, you know humans eventually is going to use that technology. If that is the case, you need to care about what the humans feel about that technology and how that technology is going to affect the human. So therefore the social science, the humanities, the arts, the religion, spirituality, all that needs to come in. And this is why we say this is an integrated framework tool that brings people together, hopefully to work together uh, to provide the solutions uh, to the right. Yeah. And these are the niche areas, uh, the 30 niche areas that have been identified. And let me tell you, uh, it has gone through a lot of discussions uh, with everyone, the more than a thousand stakeholders, uh, we have been um, about asking whether this is okay. And for your information, uh, it's not about you. Uh, it's not about, hey, how come uh, I punya area tak ada dalam ni? Uh, how come? Uh, uh, please do not ask that kind of question. Uh, uh, because of the fact that this has to be uh, agreed upon, agree to agree uh, by many people that this will be the one that will now move forward. So it's not easy uh, for us to get various ministries, agriculture, defense, semua to uh, agree to agree to these uh, 30 um, niche areas. And this is for energy, we are looking for diversified renewable energy, energy storage, or the microgrid for business, uh, we are looking into business models, digitized autonomous services, and of course, fintech, as I said, um, is a niche area uh, that, that needs to be looked into. In terms of tourism, we have this um, high value tourism. So digitalized tourism, what are we talking here? AI needs to come in, uh, augmented reality, uh, virtual reality needs to come in on digitalized tourism. If you're talking about medical and healthcare, those people in the health campus uh, of Kuantan, they need to start thinking about digital health, about precision medicine about clinical trials all right so and start to see where uh, each can contribute in terms of engineering those people in engineering um, advanced material for circular economy and sustainable society next gen um, uh, smart factories manufacturing and of smart devices and technology development all this is the niche uh, smart cities, we are looking for integrated urban infrastructure, smart system for connected rural urban community, human-centered um, design and analytics. And I'll be talking about rural urban community, how you can connect them as an example. In water and food, uh, we are looking for premium halal food. So halal is another key uh, driver, um, uh, game changer in RMK12. Uh, that, that I think I've also discussed this uh, before with IIUM, whether they want to pay attention or not, um, that I said halal will be the game changer. And of course, now it is in RMK12. And those people involved in water, uh, you know, with the floods and whatnot, integrated water resource management needs to now come in. Are those who don't think themselves in agriculture and forestry, but essentially, please look into, you are doing, there is a need for high value seafood, especially people with uh, in the marine science or in OSEM, they need to now look for high value seafood, how they can contribute to that um, for premium tropical fruits, especially people in plant science, uh, this is something that you need to look into, local agricultural input, smart supply chain, especially if, you are, if we pay attention to halal, then smart supply chain, halal smart supply chain, Chain. Personalized, okay, all of us are in education. So we should be looking into personalized experiential learning. Um, micro credentials, I said, this is what uh, it's all about. The uh, MQA had already uh, keluar isu menyatakan semua program akademik yang dilakukan yang telah mendapat kelulusan MQA, please change that program also to micro credentials so that you can now um, go to the world rather than the world coming to IIUM. Why not have IIUM go to the world? So uh, uh, in the sense that kita pancarkan ke, uh, our, all of our program via micro credential and the student never need to come but they still have to pay to get the IM degree from micro credential so this we have uh, advocated already and a lot of IPTS is already doing that but very very SLOW coming from the IPTAs I don't know um, maybe there's still fear there's worry I will not sure what is the worry about but essentially we all need to income generate and uh, it's high time that if we are moving internationalization for IUM then micro credentials probably 
the way forward and global online learning, of course, to promote the local content. And please remember that what sells is not in English, what sells is in Bahasa. So um, uh, if you look at uh, our uh, um, MAPIM, uh, uh, our uh, IUM uh, uh, publication, uh, 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 publication uh, unit uh, yang dalam MAPIM, uh, kebanyakannya the books that we sell are not the books that is written in English, but the books that is written in Bahasa. Because all libraries around the world, they uh, they have people who uh, like to talk, uh, like to learn Bahasa Malaysia, and they all want a lot of the resources in Bahasa. So that is a clue. Um, in fact, for USM, I, I said that um, uh, but there's a need to move that and the greater sales from our IIUM publishers, uh, uh, sorry, IIUM, USM publishers is actually the books and um, written in Bahasa. So um, uh, environment and biodiversity, we have people uh, in working on precision biodiversity, uh, that is the idea, and those in waste management, uh, we are also looking for innovative eco products uh, from waste. That means turning from waste to gold, uh, I call, where you take the waste and change it to something very useful. So there you are, these uh, 30 niche areas uh, for the FRGS or whatever grants that you are applying, including Malaysia Grand Challenge. And um, these niche areas uh, will be reviewed every two to three years. Uh, after we have done the foresighting to see and ensure that Malaysia is still relevant to enter the marketplace. And in order to make sure that your innovation is going to work, you cannot simply say, oh, I live, I am in Kuantan, so ambillah mana-mana village dekat Kuantan to see whether I can move halal or what. No, you have to go to a place that has all this lapan eye. You have to analyze whether the place ha that you want to now make sure industry is growing in the area that, uh, in, the, um, in the area that you want to, to now be able to move, uh, do we have the infrastructure, the infrastructure, the intellectual capital, the mid people, the integrity, that means the governance of the area uh, is uh, equipped to handle that, uh, the incentive from the government, is it okay to make sure that industry will fly, do you have institutions that you can work together, um, interaction, do, they, do you see the interaction um, ability? Uh, of the people uh, between the universities and the polytechnics, the community colleges, and, and with that, with the industry. So do you see the interaction? And is the quality of the product good enough for internationalization? So all this needs to be there. And of course, the collaborative platform uh, needs to be kept with the connectors, the producers, the technology providers, the finance set. All these things needs to be when uh, this is um, uh, another talk that I need to give to the technology uh, innovation office, uh, if they are all to the uh, IIUM um, uh, uh, private wing uh, or private company uh, uh, that, that can now need to understand this part, but not actually to the academics. But to the academics, what is needed is that you need, we have mapped everything. Uh, if you want to move halal, if you want to move uh, superfood, if you want to move this or you want to move that, we have mapped where you need to go in Malaysia. And we're using this map uh, in the details of, there are a lot of the details are in the, in the book. So basically, please uh, download uh, the My 1010 My STIE book. I will give the link uh, after this. Download this and um, uh, more than 50 countries around the world have already downloaded this in order to understand and APEC actually, um, <clears throat> Asia Pacific countries are also learning from the academy in how to do this. My greatest fear is that our ideas uh, but the one that is going to make it happen will be the other countries because if we are SLOW again. Okay, um, <clears throat> how do now, okay, after you listen to all that, you know, mungkin um, bengang uh, lagi. So basically, how now do I use, okay, 1010 my STIE to strategize for r and And I'm using IIUM uh, Kuantan campus uh, as, uh, as an example, right? So um, you need to understand, uh, to if we are um, to regain uh, or to gain RNI strength, it will require you to number one, love the university. If you love the university and not yourself, then you will move in the direction that I'm, I am suggesting. If you love yourself, then you can say, forget about what I'm trying to say. So I hope that we can convince all of you to love the university, because if you do that, you are now going to be the kind of people that the nation needs in order to now move research agenda to drive a focused niche strength. So 
voila, what then is the niche strength of uh, IUM? So mungkin ada dua atau tiga, may not be one. All right, but to every campus, there might be a focused niche strength. So in the current pandemic situation, pursuing research obviously is going to be more challenging because the amount of money available is not that much. So to pursue, therefore, sustainable science in accord with the new norm, you need to show an agile response. This is the number one, ladies and gentlemen, if anything you learn from this talk, agile response, the need to adapt and innovate and to change. That means even if you learn about um, this technology X when you come back to do Y, you need to now see whether you can adapt and innovate that technology X and to do Y to see how it can now be able to drive a focused niche area to ensure relevancy. So this is to ensure that the continuity of science towards um, solving problems and development of effective intervention uh, to achieve a better and more um, sustainable future for all of humanity. So we need to move this multidisciplinary or transdisciplinary collaboration to achieve this difficult task of producing um, a more dynamic and wholesome solution. So for the Kuantan campus, I am suggesting Kuantan, whether you agree or not agree, I am suggesting that the Kuantan campus focus on sustainable health uh, in line with the sustainable agenda of IIUM. So the Gomba campus, maybe uh, with Tan Sri there, uh, is already moving for the SDG um, and the center under Professor Zainal probably is also moving on that. But uh, the if, if there is a need to bring people together and create a focused strength for the Kuantan campus uh, after being there for about one and a half years, uh, I see that there is a need to move for sustainable health, All right? So why, why do I say so? Okay, of course, every, in everything you need to show arguments huh? because people need to now understand. If in the Kuantan campus, you have people in medicine, you have people in nursing, you have people in um, uh, pharmacy, you have people in dentistry, um, you know, and like health and all that. So if you are interested to drive health care, I mean, including SASMEC, uh, the hospital in Kuantan, if you are moving for health care, then you must understand that the evolution of medicine, whether you like it or not, is going towards precision medicine. Habis cerita, because the, uh, even the um, ministry, KKM, Ministry of Health, is also moving towards precision medicine. So if we are doing that, that is very important that you see that the research that is being done by the clinicians, by people in COM, Community of Med uh, uh, Medicine, is moving towards precision medicine. So it's moving towards personalized medicine, it's moving towards uh, people involved in bioinformatics, artificial intelligence, should now work together with uh, medicine to actually now produce predictive, uh, to make it predictive, uh, to make it preventive. You have the therapy, you have the uh, vaccine, the group uh, coming in and to make it participatory. So that is that. Because as I said, Gomba ke, Kuantan ke, you have multidisciplinary. But in, 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 in Kuantan, you have multidisciplinary, true, but they are related to health and the sciences. And this is where Kulia Science uh, should be able to now work together with all these uh, others to get to provide the core backbone technology that is now needed to move uh, any of this agenda. Uh, and in terms of precision medicine, this is the slide from Ministry of Health itself, uh, to show that where is Ministry of Health going under RMK12 is to move precision medicine in two things, uh, is to move health in three things. I told you the three niche area. One is digital health, the, one, the other one is clinical trial, and then the center is precision medicine. So tiga areas, uh, niche area that will be moved under medical and healthcare. So under digital, we are looking for integration of medical records, the big data, merging of clinical data, patient record. That means if you already have that system, what kind of research are you doing with the system now? Uh, Cloud-based analytic system, the AI, machine learning, big data, um, wearables. You know, there's a lot of people in engineering, um, uh, um, uh, uh, especially um, that is now uh, in EE, for example, uh, that can move now uh, 
uh, wearables uh, uh, that can maintain our health and the convergence of medical technology or even having Zoom clinics now. This is the way forward to have Zoom clinics uh, that the patient dengan apa uh, susah nak datang ke you, you now see the patient uh, via Zoom and therefore if you're going to do that, you need to be able to have them wear the wearables so that you can see the personal data coming in onto your screen and you can make an expert advice uh, to, the, to the patient. So, um, and of course, um, if you are in the sciences, then there is a need for us to generate more data scientists, people involved in AI and data analytics. Uh, so that is very important. But even if you are in computer science, right, it is important that Buddha yang nak dihasilkan, studying the da real data. Therefore, to study the real data, not to have a, a, a concocted data, real data, like right now, we are having the floods. What is the real data? So can the data analytic now actually learn how to now make a predictive uh, modeling system, etc., for uh, floods uh, in X place, in Selangor, for example. So this is something that we need to look into. Clinical trial, those people in the SASMEC, can they now now, the clinicians in COM, uh, can they now have the credentials necessary to do the clinical trials, uh, to be ready for clinical trials, right? Um, uh, and explore new areas of herbal medicine, TCM and medical devices and digitalized uh, system, remote monitoring of study. Uh, because right now, it's about wellness paradigm, people. It's not about uh, people coming to the hospital, but it's about the hospital going out now to the people. Or, uh, you know, that is the whole idea. In fact, uh, um, you know, at USM, I, I would say the KPI of the uh, Pengarah Hospital is to not to see an increased number of patients, but to see a decreased number of patients. Because if you see an increased number of patients coming in into the hospital, another the wellness paradigm is kaput. Uh, but if you now have a lot of the time, the hospital goes out and the medicine people go out and be able to create prevention um, and, and bagi awareness of health, then the number of people who comes into the hospital gets lesser and lesser. And that is what we are aiming for, not to make a bigger hospital, but to make a smaller one so that we can only the necessary needs to come in. But if you now say, I am in Gomba, how, how can I now move um, up and help? Um, um, uh, the, the, the Kuantan campus, how can it be bigger? Please, on a bigger scale, what we need for multidisciplinary approach, Professor Ame, is actually planetary health, where all disciplines can now participate. Planetary health is not about health, health, it's about the health of the planet itself, right? So one health, because in medicine, we're talking about public health, then we talk about global health, right? Now we talk about one health, then now we are talking about planetary health. So if you look now in parliament or whatever, the buzzword today is planetary health. So please, uh, in the mindset of the people, if you want to use words, please word, use buzzwords. Otherwise, you ketinggalan lah dalam you punya working paper, you punya research paper, you are still using old words, right? So one health, basically, kita tahu is an interdisciplinary approach stressing the connection between a human, animal, environment. Ingat, tiga benda ni, which is actually part of the SDG agenda, yeah? human, animal, environment. So one health approach has been criticized. Um, for excessive focus on emerging uh, zoonotic, uh, um, uh, inadequate incorporation of environmental concept and expertise and insufficient incorporation of people in the social science, the behavioral science, and people involved in policies. So it's still somewhat silo. So that's why planetary health now becomes a more inclusive, where social science, um, humanities, religion, all come in uh, together uh, to enhance uh, planetary. So planetary is from local to global, or more accurately, from molecular to planetary, to basically address the health, the well-being, and the sustainability of human, animal, and environment. So we want to employ this One Health framework, but this One Health is going to be a multidisciplinary, uh, creating all this global health research, education programs program, policies, planning, etc. But what we want essentially is to create local models of orang kata healthy coexistence between human, animal, environment. Kalau tak belajar lagi with the floods, I don't know what else we're going to belajar. Um, the floods is already an example of climate change because of the lack of balance between human, animal, and environment. COVID is an, a great example of this uh, 
co apa lack of apa ni kita punya respect and as we encroach more and more into the environment we bringing the people closer to the animals that we should not be close enough so this all this created um, in uh, health uh, that we see uh, okay this uh, is critical in order to ensure a sustainable future for our shared uh, home of planet earth and why do we want to study about planetary health? Because countries rich in biodiversity, uh, like us in Malaysia. So if you see all these countries in the equator, um, there are high potential to now be able to generate uh, zoonotic diseases. So as we degrade the environment, it brings us closer to the animals and the spread of zoonotic. And, and those in yellow are the most upon kata countries that is um, hot spot. And Malaysia is a hot spot uh, for zoonotic disease. Hot spot maknanya kita yang akan contribute to the world, the more and more we uh, need. And as you see, the more balak uh, that is now, the more balak kita dah nampak banyak dalam video, more trees are being cut. Um, we are going to encroach more and more and it will not be uh, 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 if we begin to see zoonotic uh, diseases start to come. We already see Nipah uh, coming now, we see COVID and we see Omni, uh, all the sorts of variants of COVID. So basically what we wanted to do at the Academy uh, together with the Malaysian government is to now develop a national database for environmental genomics for early detection of potential zoonotic. That means we are taking uh, samples from the bats, uh, from the squirrels, from the pangolins, from all those uh, to now see what are the organisms, uh, what kind of viruses are involved uh, and actually be able now to uh, uh, pinpoint uh, whenever like Nipah happened before, uh, where is the area and, uh, and uh, where are the uh, areas where all these animals are located. So these are now something that we need to do uh, to make sure that we know and the data is in our control. And climate change therefore has an impact us a lot. Um, it's a major driver for the increase in the number of dengue virus and the number of uh, infections that we're seeing from respiratory and also the transmission of malaria and natural disasters like floods. And again, with the floods coming in, we're gonna see an enhanced in typhoid, cholera and other waterborne diseases. And during a six month period in 2020, 51.6 million people were already impacted by 84 disasters from floods, drought, storms in countries already struggling with coronavirus pandemic and the economic impact is a loss of trillions uh, USD. So back to where I'm coming from. So you can see why sustainable health is very important. Either you attack it, because at the end of the day, you can attack it from precision medicine. But if you attack it from precision medicine, you know that it is a countless thing that you have to do. You have to predict what's the next virus. We have to take care of the vaccine. We have the therapy, etc. But in fact, we should have been taking care of the planetary health. Kalau planetary health dijaga, we will not be having this zoonotic and all these other things happening. So why we say in the Quran, halal toiban, that means we need to now preserve the environment for the future generation. If we are able to do that, which require a one nation and whole society approach, this kind of uh, diseases uh, will not be happening. Right. So basically, we can attack sustainable health from two angles. Those in the sciences who can see how they can drive from planetary health can now come in to make sure. And those in clinical, uh, in medicine and in healthcare who wants to drive healthcare can also take care should the disease come in. But end game for all is to have the wellness paradigm. And if we have this wellness paradigm, then we're talking about sustainable health and with community interventions that need to be there to ensure resilience. And these community interventions will then come in uh, uh, together with the uh, community, uh, community engagement that we are doing, right? So this is what I'm seeing as putting together a, a holistic picture of what can be happening uh, in the Kuantan campus and working together with the Gombak campus as well. So in details, um, uh, you can download this uh, from the book, but it will show you uh, various ideas. If you, in case you mati akal and you have no idea what to do after I finish talking, which is usually the case, um, uh, these are the 10 technologies that we have, right? This is to move the medical. This is for the medical people. If you want to move for future pandemic, we can have medical robots. And if you want to do that, you need to now work together with technology one, which is 5G60, technology two, sensor, technology uh, five, uh, which is AI and technology seven. So academy had done sampai macam ni, 
uh, orang kata apa uh, idiot proof uh, guideline uh, so that the academics can now start thinking about what exactly do we want in terms of uh, just to catch up not to do all this but to do any one of this area uh, require uh, some thinking uh, at least guide to you lah um, like if you are if you are uh, if you are into crispr uh, antiviral treatment using crispr as an example but if you to do that in the grant we probably will need to see uh, apa advanced material uh, atau augmented analytic and and in combination with bioscience technology so this is to show to you if you want to catch up this is what you do but if you want to leapfrog technology that mean you want to now say you are advanced and you want to see so you see the more you want to leapfrog towards advanced the more technologies are needed to combine. So what is it saying, ladies and gentlemen, is that you can no longer work in silo. Itulah yang tayo nak cerita ni. If you don't have the expertise in IIUM, it's high time IIUM, go out there and find other university punya expert and work together. 5G, orang hebatnya UTM. So go and work with UTM uh, in, in order to just don't say, oh, I don't have 5G. Nak buat macam mana tak ada 5G? No. Go and work with UTM because this is where collaborative R&D platform is all about. All right. So look at your strength and what is their strength and then combine together. So if you are going to use biotech, biotech ni macam-macam, they boleh move halal, they boleh move agriculture, they boleh move so people in biotech, you actually can move a lot of things. I color code some uh, those in green for agriculture, um, uh, apa, uh, those yang working on halal, uh, I even put in uh, what is there uh, working on halal to produce IoT sensors and nanoparticles for rapid halal authentication along the uh, halal supply chain. So halal pun dah move halal, basically halal science is driving halal industry to the next level. But if we're still doing halal, same old, same old, we're also not there yet. So that is why it's high time that we bring in uh, new blood to come in into the institutes or into the centers or into the kulias to have collaborative, that's what I say, collaborative uh, platform. Then uh, ni, in order to do that, somewhere along the line, RMC need to now put in um, KPI of the deans or pengarah is to have collaboration. Kalau kurang collaboration, kurang markah. They can. Kalau more collaboration, banyak lagi markah dia. Because that's what I did in USM. Barulah collaboration berlaku. If you continue to put KPI of the same thing to the dean, the dean will not allow the pensyarah to keluar untuk bekerjasama berkolaborasi. This is what I'm trying to say. As a change in policy is now needed if you now want to see an agile response of working together. But then again, I'm surprised. In an Islamic university, collaboration working together is should be apa sort sort sway lah. Should be uh, something that that is all natural and not something that uh, is to be fought about uh, uh, all the time. Yeah. If we are now seeing agriculture, agriculture is not for UPM, as I said, you know, but it is meant for all of us working together Skalani, to produce um, apa, things that is needed to drive. And you can see agriculture is a lagat. Uh, so it's high time that you now develop uh, these um, ideas. Today is to show to you what are the ideas and whatnot. You know, it could require in-depth workshop and whatnot to actually now be able to move to the next level. But enough today uh, to have this um, uh, catch up uh, to show to you this is the kind of thinking that you need for to move now FRGS or Malaysian Grand Challenge or, or whatever. Huh? And, and basically in everything that I say, uh, strangely enough, uh, that the fellows when they were doing all these things, at the end of the day, we find that halal covers semua, semua, every aspect of uh, 1010 My STIE is about halal. So even uh, I sat down with Inhat and actually say, okay, and we sat down at the academy also um, to, to look at the technologies that is going to make things halal, you know, and in, even in energy, in business and all that, everything has got halal. So basically, this is to me, kalau if this is a niche area for IIUM per se, because as I said, nobody can challenge you when it comes to halal, Toiban. I mean, um, uh, people can challenge you based on technologies because the lab facilities 
is uh, in IIUM also needs to be upgraded. But if you talk about technology and halal, I don't think people will query about halal because IIUM is number one as far as theology is there in the ranking. So basically, if you combine your strength on halal science, if, if I say to you, okay, if you don't want to talk about sustainable health, let's talk about a halal science. If halal science is not just meant for in heart, halal science is meant for IIUM because if with this halal science, you see every part of 1010 my STIE is about halal science. So um, uh, that's why we even propose at the national level to have a national halal super corridor uh, 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 to see. And hopefully this now, uh, uh, right now it is a game changer in RMK12. Uh, so that means halal is the, the support so like a game changer in RMK12. So then let's work on the halal supply chain. Um, it is not, it, you know, when you talk about halal, it's no longer about visiting the site. It's now about blockchain, the whole uh, process. And how do you do tracer studies? That's why we say the nanoparticles out there are, are needed in order to trace so that we can do the blockchain. So there are many thinking that needs to be there now. If IIUM punya niche is to move halal science. Maknanya, you move the science, the STI, but backing behind all the STI that you do is towards Sharia compliant, it is halal. So who can now argue with that? So this, this, this is what I'm saying as a bigger agenda from my perspective, how we see, because at the end of the day, you know, IUM has to answer, you are good, what is so great about you? SDG, tak payah cakap. All the five RUs are moving SDG. USM is an apex university that move SDG daripada zaman tu early lagi, right? So bottom line, SDG is not uniquely yours. It is now everybody's, all the 20 public universities. In fact, dalam blueprint dah move semua university. Um, even Sunway is now a bigger champion of SDG with the Planetary Institute for Planetary Health that is now set up immediately. Right, so bottom line, and Sunway is creating a uh, flood proof uh, cities uh, that uh, sponge cities that now uh, will be a showpiece uh, for everyone to see how actually to now create cities without floods. So, all these things is now being done by even the public, private universities. So, SDG is no longer uniquely yours. So, what will now be uniquely yours? So, that's why I, I suggest halal science. But anyway, that's up to you guys. Um, uh, halal science. If you talk about SDG, as I say about sustainability, they are memang cover to ensure planetary health because the Quran memang they can, kita kena maintain planetary health uh, uh, for the future generation. So planetary health also move all that. But at the end of the day, is for you to now say to yourself, the kind of research that I'm doing is it a wow? Okay, wow to apa buka wow bulan, but wow, W, is it world class? It means it's space setting, you're doing something uniquely different. Is it outstanding? Is it winnable? That means winnable means does it win the hearts and minds of the people, the politician, the rakyat, the, the industry? So is it a wow? So if you now start to produce research grants that is a wow mindset, then you want to create the kind of impactful research because you know, the last wow has to be winnable. That means it has to win the hearts and minds of the people, right? So to do world class and outstanding, Standing saja tak cukup. Maknanya age index saja Q1, Q2 tak lepas. Eh? In order to do now the future grant, it has to be outcome based rather than output based. So more example in case you club WhatsApp, again, more examples uh, that we want to see. Like if you are in marine science, uh, those uh, in InnoSAM and, and uh, Kuliah Science uh, in uh, Kuantan, we want to now change boat nelayan di Malaysia to actually now start using this kind of technologies. Um, high-tech video cameras, GPS, uh, cold chain, um, uh, apa, hydraulic uh, rotation sensors, uh, electronic monitoring, so that they can now do tuna. You know, uh, kita ada license uh, untuk tuna, but very few of our nelayan is able now to um, uh, be able to now uh, fish for tuna because tuna fishing are the license. So because we don't have the kind of facilities uh, that we need, this this is done in, uh, in, to, in order to answer for tuna fishing. Then the other one is that if you are in engineering or whatever uh, area, all right, look at kalau kita tanam pokok pisang pun, tapi kita kena tarik tandan pisang keluar satu-satu. So by doing this kind of concept here, uh, you see uh, pisang just comes out uh, like that. Uh, ni. Uh, again, we require engineering to, to be able to do this. Or of course, the usage of drone um, in, in agriculture to spray for the pesticides. 
uh, and whatnot, uh, the drone, and of course, drone is also being used now in healthcare uh, to, to search um, uh, if people are lost in the mountains or, or whatever and to bring food, especially during the flood. During the flood, we should send out lots of these drones with uh, cameras to now find who and where are the people located on the rooftops, etc., to be able to send rescue boats there. Uh, this is where we use, start using technology uh, in, in uh, adverse uh, situations. And you see this, this is done with the sensor, artificial intelligence, and sensor uh, untuk menoreh uh, getah. Yeah? Uh, so rather than makcik-pakcik pergi menoreh getah uh, in the morning, early morning, and then uh, ni, but with the sensor, uh, it will now see what is the correct temperature, etc. that will give the highest yield of latex. And the machine was now with artificial intelligence will now start to toreh this getah at the right time, at the right temperature so that the highest yields are now uh, dihasilkan. So this is the kind of thinking that we want now, uh, not uh, uh, low-end thinking, but high-end thinking towards uh, about producing solutions that is now needed to create a knowledge-based economy. And this is an example of this in, in China. And you can see that tak ada, tak ada orang dah. Huh? All this tak ada orang. And, and you can see all these are uh, having their own uh, sensor and penoreh getah ni. And the latex is collected inside here. Uh, the people come in and collect the latex, but eventually this latex also will now go through a system that is now going to a big uh, tanki. But what I'm trying to say here, you see these lines and rows of rows of emptiness. This is where you can now have kalulut farming uh, in between these rows uh, that we are now advocating uh, at USM. That uh, well, kita, for all the forests, we can have the kalulut farms uh, over there as well. So uh, therefore, in superfood, uh, we are looking for seaweed, for madu kalulut. Madu kalulut now is a big thing. Eh? Uh, so uh, swiftlet, bird nest uh, is another, uh, all these areas. Uh, what I'm trying to say is that kita kena um, uh, pakai baju uh, mengikut badan lah. So bottom line, if your lab doesn't have the kind of facilities, maybe you need to now adapt, innovate, change uh, uh, using the kind of mindset but moving into uh, macam uh, kelulut. Okay, There are people who can grow the kelulut, fine, but they are what about, what about doing genetic studies on on the bee itself, uh, so that we can now find what is the gene, where is the gene, and adakah kelulut atau honey uh, from, you know, in the Quran, it says uh, honey is good for prevention, um, uh, cure, cure for disease, huh? for is for prevention. So bottom line, sekarang I ask honey from which bee uh, we're we talking about, uh, is it all honey? So this is a question from the, uh, that we want to now uh, be able to answer, and why not use um, bioscience technology biotech um, to now be able to see how can we clone this um, and look at the genes of the bees and say whether the bees for kalulut, the bees uh, for, for all the various honey that, that we now have, uh, are they the same? Uh, is the honey the same? So th these are some of the questions uh, in under Islamic science uh, that probably need to be answered um, as well, but in driving the superfood industry. Right, um, and then we have why we need the superfood because this is a growing consumer interest in healthy diet and wellness. Again, back to sustainable health, ascending demand for natural, nutrient-rich food containing vitamins and increased consumer self-care. Right now, this is the kind of thing we are seeing. And Malaysia's prospects, County, the stingless bee of Kolulut has now been listed as a Malaysian superfood by Mardi, and therefore there's backing a lot for Mardi to now be able to move. This is the kind of information our researchers need. Need to have in order to capitalize so that now janganlah otak tu hanya fikir hidupku hanya FRGS kalau tak ada FRGS mati matilah macam ni so you have to now have a bigger thinking go for teraju go for yayasan inovasi malaysia go for mardi go for a lot of other um, ministries that also have grants right so um, there's also this increasing consumer healthcare phenomenon due to aging uh, the need for microalgae for example and the technologies that is now needed uh, in order order to move uh, the superfood uh, industry, they are all there again using the 1010 technology. I also want to say how you now connect the community, right? Just sekarang ni, 
uh, these are examples just to show you as examples that academy has also done uh, with UTHM uh, frugal internet connectivity uh, where apa, uh, the signal from uh, uh, we suggest from university ataupun desa internet uh, that that has this capacity and then we then uh, tarik the signal i think engineering prof i mean mungkin boleh faham uh, from the ee group they, they tarik the signal from the paid for uh, apa internet punya uh, area uh, and then send it out to 30 to 40 homes of the b40 and that now these people can get internet free uh, with at least 50 mbps so if that is the case they can do now online learning they can do online business you can do a lot of things that is now online so once internet is made available many things can now be done so this is something that um, uh, grants to encourage social innovation are uh, available under malaysia innovation foundation or yim and uh, this this is kind of thing that we were thinking like for example can iium kuantan help uh, apa, by doing this because kot mana pun university dah bayar dah uh, the the uh, the uh, the price for the internet dah bayar dah per year so we can we can now offer to at least 30 to 40 homes uh, around uh, 10 km from where they are detarik from so and the cost is about 50k i think so but then again you can also see this as um, the need for our dorm uh, maybe our dorm the students uh, who are now coming back to university they don't go to class but rather remain in the dorm so that they can access for the internet tapi internet dalam dorm pun wallahu alam so basically this is something that we can also do to help the student you see there's a lot of things if you put your mind to it then I, when I visited Inosem, I saw that um, the cut Inosem uh, beach uh, area too. There's a lot of plastic that's coming from anywhere around the world. It seems to be like a sinkhole of plastic. So what this is, an, uh, when I remembered that, I, I looked for something in the internet, and this is uh, where in um, Colombia, uh, in in uh, Colombia. Um, the Colombian social enterprise, uh, Concepticos Plasticos, uh, mungkin the engineering and architecture group uh, in uh, Gomba can look into this, uh, where they collect all this plastic, you know, they collect, uh, they, they teach the students and the children of the village about collection of this plastic, the village folks about collection of this plastic, and then they put the plastic together and change that into bricks. And this is bricks of plastic. Um, so this is a recycle plastic classroom uh, that is now built uh, uh, and it costs 30% less than the traditional uh, classroom. So, and the plastic bricks are cheaper, are lighter, and more durable than the conventional brick. So imagine sekarang, I mean, uh, what our architect and our engineers could have helped the people who are homeless uh, due to the floods. So this is something that IUM can actually do. Tapi kalau kita tak pernah fikir along this area, apa yang kita boleh buat, right? So we are just bantu untuk clean the house. Okay, you clean the house. But at the end of the day, is that sustainable? If the floods are still going to come. And so these are the kind of things that we want to now be able to solve a bigger agenda rather than just apa orang kata uh, tolong waktu tu lah uh, okay so this uh, we need to provide sustainable solution so uh, and this kind of uh, cheap homes uh, can be done um, especially um, if, if if you can do this uh, by our architects and our um, engineering group uh, and our people in chemistry uh, to to create uh, the plastic apa orang kata cheaper plastic lighter and more durable conventional than conventional brick we can do this we can create many kinds of homes and very fast and cheaper can be done to provide homes for the people of the homeless yeah so and of course to do this this grand challenge grants they are all there i don't want to go through this um apa they are all available but uh, those who are really into it uh, led by professors industries and whatnot please try to aim for the strategic research fund this is 15 juta per grant and it is not about a, a small dinky idea it has to be a leapfrog idea uh, to move uh, so basically kalau tak ready tak payahlah uh, but you if you are ready work together with the universities and and uh, industries um, uh, to get this particular grant but if you are ready for commercialization then there's a lot of this uh, technology uh, readiness level TRL 2 to 4 uh, and above so semua mosti punya grant tidak akan overlap dengan FRGS. So FRGS will be technology readiness level one to two, and then from two to four or up to nine uh, will now be from the MOSTI grants. So with that, um, please uh, use this 
uh, link uh, to download the book because um, you need to study for your area in detail. We have mapped everything that is needed uh, close to becoming idiot proof lah, of what needs to be done so that you can now see your area. So my thought, job today is to just give you some examples and, and, um, and to show you the way to understand the 1010 My STIE better because what you do has greater impact than just talking about it. All right. So thank you very much. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Back to you, Prof. Adina. Assalamualaikum salam. Alhamdulillah. Thank you so much. Subhanallah. Wow. A lot, a lot, a lot of things to digest, Prof. Subhanallah. Okay, right. Um, so thank you so much, uh, <coughs> Prof. Data uh, Asma, um, for a very detailed uh, description of the whole thing. Uh, she went to the extent of giving examples, okay, in terms of how we uh, can utilize uh, 1010 My STIE. Um, in our proposals, in our uh, delivery of um, ideas uh, for the Malaysian Grand Challenge grants. Okay, do I get any questions from our uh, respected uh, colleagues? Do I have any questions? From uh, anyone? Question direct. Yes, uh, yes. Uh, Prof. Ame, please. The first okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, may I? Okay, so thank you very much, uh, Dato. Uh, very fruitful. Um, information on this uh, 1010 MSTIE. My STIE. My, my STIE. Okay, sorry. <laughs> okay. Susah sikit nak sebut, but never mind. Um, this just like, um, I just want to ask, because we spoke a lot about um, multidisciplinary and transdisciplinary. Okay, basically, all, the whole of the document have, have uh, talk about this. What about this, the one that we are promoting in IUM, which is integration of knowledge? I mean, that's number one. Okay, mm -hmm. and because I, uh, what we have doing, been doing this morning, because I was uh, just got, I just received uh, the number of active research in uh, UM currently that is being managed by RMC. Currently, we got only, only one, 1,980 number of research. Tak cukup satu satu. Dah, apa apa? Your the number of staff is three thousand. Uh, no, 2000, 2400. Oh, 2400. Oh, okay. Academic stuff. Uh, hmm? uh, so, but then uh, one of the things that we, I think that is also popular among us, that's talking the same thing about uh, integration knowledge, eh? hmm. uh, and also to my STI is our one of the topic that is relevant to IUM is terrorism. Mm -hmm. uh, kalau, if let's say uh, Prof can uh, link it, how terrorism because I, we don't want to break terrorism for economic purposes. Mm. <laughs> uh, okay, but then uh, how does it be linked in this in this um, uh, framework? Saya um, uh, tak sure uh, because this is like terkejut untuk nak tanya. Uh, but you have to look into the socio-economic driver whether terrorism uh, will create the kind of impact to uh, the you know you have to cari the connectivity lah uh, whether terrorism akan uh, akan create impact to uh, probably the agriculture industry ke atau to the manufacturing ke they can connect melalui the socio economic driver tu you can still do still do terrorism tapi macam mana dia connect to the socio economic driver and ataupun you study terrorism tetapi macam mana technology is now contributing to a high end terrorism that is now happening some uh, like like for example um sekarang ni dengan um apa uh, cyber we we need to enhance cyber security uh, because uh, you know kebanyakan kita sekarang dah sakit jantung kebanyakan kita sekarang dah pakai pacemakers but with terrorism sekarang ni they can blow uh, blow up the pacemaker uh, by remote control so basically you're dead uh, you know, I'm trying to say, so how hmm. now do we prevent that uh, from happening? So still within the context of uh, terrorism, tetapi bagaimana advanced technologies yang ada sekarang will make the terrorism more undetectable. Tara. Kita tak tahu siapa buat because somebody's handphone is now going to say, uh, press the button and somebody important get blown up. 
all because they dah pakai pay setter. So actually in Malaysia, we are already testing which pay setters are uh, pay setter, pula pacemaker, uh, pacemaker yang masuk dalam jantung tu, yang bagi you, uh, bila, bila jantung fail, the pacemaker will then uh, getak the jantung kan. So sekarang ni, depending on where this uh, company yang buat benda tu, whether that pacemaker is susceptible uh, to be now, uh, apa, Uh, IOT control uh, and, and get blown up. So so and make the person die. So basically, you can be blackmailed. Uh, there's also another terrorism. You can be blackmailed. Uh, hey, hello. You have to. Uh, those clinician can answer lah. How you want to put the pacemaker in? You got to bring down the heart. Nah, macam nak mati lah. So basically, masuk pacemaker and then only you have to see that they they got that kadang kan. So bottom line sekarang ni is 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 uh, it can be the person can now be blackmailed. Uh, to say, okay, if you don't want us to blow you up, then you pay um, uh, or bagi information. So this is the kind of cyber security kecanggihan in terrorism uh, that we are now seeing. That's why for us uh, on the 1010, cyber security is one of the technology yang memang kena concentrate upon. So I I can think from the science point of view uh, like that lah for terrorism. Tapi uh, sila usaha to connect to the 1010. As I said, to adopt, adapt, and innovate. Okay, thank you so much, Prof. Prof Hamid, any more? Any more questions from you? Uh, bagi Chan orang lain. <laughs> <laughs> okay, others? If, if not, I will come back to Prof Amir for his second question. Anybody else? But do you, any see, but do you see um my uh, thinking about uh, if the niche for IIUM is halal science? then there's a possibility that IUM can move a lot. Halal, science. Science is there already. It can move any of the 1010. Tapi your approach is to make the everything that you do halal. That will be a game changer for the world, if not for the country, for IUM. To me lah. Okay, uh, I agree with that, Datuk. Uh, yeah, that's, why, that's, why I, that's why I was looking at the uh, titles of the Uh, research project on how we can put it everything into the framework of responsible research. Yeah, betul. Uh, yeah, you got it. So if you if you can drive it, that will be the first in the world. Because this I mean, technology will last you until 2050, you know? Uh, Prof. Asma, I have, um, while I was uh, listening to your uh, deliberation on the whole thing, uh, something came to my mind uh, and uh, I'm sorry to ask this question, but I think I, I want to ask this question just to get an idea from you. Um, at the moment, besides COVID-19, one of the biggest issues that our country is facing is corruption. Mm. Whether we like it or not, that is, that is really staring at us in our face. Mm. So if let's say someone wants to do something on this particular scope of study, I, I'm, I'm trying to think in terms of how is the person going to match against the uh, 1010 my STIE? Because, it, because this one, because to me, uh, I feel, that, I honestly feel that, I honestly feel that what we have at the moment is more of like coming up with material things, you know, it is gearing up towards uh, driving for economy, driving for innovation, coming at the end of the day, we come up with something material to help improve the condition, the living condition of the people. But what about our values? What about our moral, our principles, you know, our ruh as a human being, our humanistic values? Because yeah. corruption, Yeah, saya faham. Tapi you look at uh, how do you ask me how to connect, kan? Yeah. You ask. Uh -uh. Me. So for example, very simple. Je. Uh, if you're looking at environment and biodiversity, and you look at the amount of balak yang yang sekarang ni berlaku, uh. right? That is due to corruption. So kenapa you punya grant? You talk about corruption. You talk about values of the corruption, but you connect that to the balak. So eventually it will be connected to 1010 my STIE. Under environment and biodiversity. Eh, hello, corruption happens everywhere lah. Agriculture lah, environment lah, yeah. dalam finance lah, dalam everything. So, corruption is a topic that can cover anything also dalam all the socio-economic driver, dalam dalam uh, apa, dalam manufacturing, dalam yes. Uh, yes. Uh, uh, energy, even when you generate energy pun ada corruption. So, bottom line, it is 
Eh, that's what I say, Adrina. Jangan nampak aku ni buat social science, aku ni buat religion, aku ni buat spirituality. Aku tak boleh masuk lah dalam bila ayat tu ada, already the mind is closed. The mind dah tak boleh terima uh, macam mana aku boleh participate dalam perkara ni. But like I said, connect it. That's why I kata sekarang ni, research is becoming more and more challenging. Uh, tak macam dulu dah. Uh, you boleh buat apa suka, bapak you nak buat, you nak buat. Tak apa. Tapi lah ni money is limited. You also cannot do anything you want. But if you want to do something you love, then connect it. Right, you can see yeah, how uh, you know you're giving me a question just like that to answer. Yeah. But yeah, most yeah, yeah. people can answer that correct. I rasa balok cutting ni yang bagi semua kita punya mountains kan ni dah dogol dah. That is of course due to corruption. What yeah. else is there? Yeah. There is no feeling of sustainability. Yes. That uh, apa uh, sampai lagu kan siapakah empunya balak ini? You know that kind of stuff. Yeah, lagu pun dah keluar kan. Yes. So what the like, fuck? Apa ni? Mm. If it's not corruption, there's no ethics, there's no integrity, there's yes. nothing pemikiran except for greed. Alright, so bottom line, I can connect that to environment and biodiversity T0. And you can connect that because of what happened. It can now create the climate change. It created the floods. And why yeah. it created the floods? Corruption again. Katalah yeah. ampangan tu ada 20, apa, 13 dah dah dijadikan uh, apa um, uh, condominium. So macam mana lack of ampangan now to water retention ponds dah tak ada because somebody has already converted that to condominiums. Right? Yeah, yeah. Option again. Why can't you connect it like that? Then you buat research yang relevant kepada what is happening today. And this is the kind of thinking that we want. Uh, rather than just say, you know, aku tak boleh nampak lah macam mana aku nak contribute to this 10-10, meretek lah. This, uh, this kind of attitude, I rasa kena go lah. So that's why I said innovation, adaptive, agile response. How now? Tapi I memang nampak corruption as a big uh, topic. Betul lah. As a result, you see this selangor the way it is now. Oh, uh, yeah. Bawa tak nak find out what the is going on. <laughs> Thank you, Prof. As well. All right. Any other question? Kena connect ya. Okay. Thank you, Prof. Thank you. Okay. Anybody else? Come on. We're having a very good discussion here. Uh, so it's so clear or it's so bengang. No. <laughs> Mana ni uh, Prof? Media, media kan, Dr. Nazri kan, Perda Kuantan Kampus. I'm not here. Prof. Yeah. I'm Dr. Nazri from Engineering. Ah, okay. Uh, so my dilemma is uh, from the your just uh, suggestion is that uh, we engineering lecturer we focus on our main main field. Like me, my engineering we focus on metal cutting, on machining. So if you want to do like uh, research on artificial intelligence you need to join so we need to study that that field so we sometimes we we superficial you know because you need to have a foundation of degree so you can study the the it and the programming so what 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 is your suggestion for yeah. us my suggestion is that's why I kata collaboration. Learn ni, um, apa you nak move apa uh, on the socio-economic driver, right? Uh, I'm not saying that you want to move uh, the area of artificial intelligence itself. Yang tu memang orang dalam artificial intelligence akan move the area. Yeah. Tapi orang yang macam machining, orang yang dalam EE, orang yang dalam mechanical apa semua, probably would want to move one of the socio-economic driver, like say next gener generation manufacturing for example ataupun the creation of new devices betul tak ah so so that that now for that to happen uh, what new device is now necessary for next generation um, manufacturing so if that is the case i tak tahulah that mean you you can find out in your field lah so if that is the case uh, you dalam area machining uh, how how now can you deliver whatever solution for the socio economic driver tadi so you have to collaborate it does not require you to car it does not require i, I I, dalam area I, I'm in a biotech, uh, microbiology biotech. I don't have to change, but I can definitely collaborate 
uh, dengan uh, people uh, working on uh, for example uh, on uh, 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 whatever in engineering such, such that um, I become bioengineer in a certain uh, uh, topic. I'm not an engineer but I can collaborate. So that is why daripada awal lagi saya kata uh, kena ada collaborative platform dah lah ni. Masing-masing uh, yeah. contribute dalam sendiri punya expert domain tetapi untuk menghasilkan something that macam Adrina tanya tadi lah that can connect you to the socio-economic driver yang mana yang you nak move. Mungkin dalam machining you perlu untuk agriculture. Uh, so why not the agriculture uh, from engineering point of view help move uh, precision agriculture or smart agriculture or circular economy agriculture. Macam-macam lah ni kita kita ada in terms of agriculture apa for food security uh, is also possible. So depend lah Prof apa ni um, area mana Uh, of the socio-economic driver that you want to drive. Uh, not you, but working together uh, as a group or research cluster uh, would want to drive. Okay, thank you. Right? Yeah. They can connect. So, macam mana pun they can connect. To connect that difficult, a little difficult. Still Tapi kena tengok, tengok apa, you nak apa solution you nak bagi. Kalau solution, I mean, solution you, you rasa apa benda yang you buat sekarang ni, Um, apa is men uh, macam mereka-mereka uh, daripada EE ya uh, yang buat design chip ah uh. depa uh, cakap saya oh kami pandai nak buat wearable tapi wearable for what i tanya you know wearable macam macam saya punya jam ni okay wearable for what dia kata dia boleh buat BP dia boleh buat ni 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 i say okay is that good enough Uh, because kita, I mean, I punya iWatch pun boleh, boleh buat dah all those things. So, in terms of wearable. So, dia kata, okay, I want to make a flexible wearable. You know, the one yang macam skin tu. Ah, okay. Now, that connects me to new things. Uh, my mind is already thinking new things buat dalam medicine. Kalau dia boleh buat skin ya, lagi hebat. Sebab I saw in Riken, um, you know, uh, they put on on the skin. So, sekarang ni, um, bila, bila, um, bila, katalah, uh, I, I bagi example, example lah. Um, apa ni, when I was in Germany, uh, I was eating this guy, and he was looking at his hand. I said, why are you looking at your hand? Well, I'm just looking to see whether there's any change in color. I said, what are you looking at? Because I'm wearing a skin wearable uh, that tells me whether uh, my sugar consumption dah tinggi ke tak. Faham tak? Kalau mereka yang diabetik ni, ataupun pre-diabetik, you kena watch your sugar, right? So, kalau you watch your sugar, say, Allah, tu so not lah tengok kek tu nak makan juga. But, actually, from the skin, dia dah, because they've got nano particles, uh, nano needles uh, inside that is taking the blood sample, and that blood sample is by microfluidics that is now uh, giving you a color reaction uh, if your sugar level dah mula menaik. Eh? Uh, so, nampak tak? That, that is wearable, Uh, moving to flexible, wearable skin uh, kind uh, that uh, adapts to the skin. And then uh, dekat Korea, saya tengok, um, dia pakai wearable yang um, apa connected to your skin uh, um, and uh, it's about your mood. M-O-O-D, mood. So, kalau bos tu pakai and dia punya color dah mula merah, maka stay away from the office because the boss is not going to be happy that day. So, therefore, the Koreans, they come up with this wearable yang tengok mood. Okay, don't ask me the technology behind it, but the color change and they make this uh, this wearable macam brooch tau. They buat macam brooch. So that so that they boleh pakai and then dekat somewhere somewhere lah uh, and then uh, they akan measure <laughs> orang tu punya mood that day so you know whether it's happy or sad and and what not you know so banyak pemikiran yang yang boleh berlaku uh, dalam thinking kita so that's why I said the next level thinking needs to come in uh, and, and see how you can now uh, connect that so but uh, but if if uh, if somebody was in EE and and doing this I will appreciate very much if they create wearable skin wearables that can now uh, uh, detect for diabetes. Mm. Sebab Malaysia sugar consumption to die for. Anta percaya anta tengok apa? Chai Time lah, Tea Life lah, all those things yang budak-budak punya line up beli, that is the high amount, macam high amount of sugar there. InsyaAllah orang kita akan jadi diabetic tak lama. Uh, Tengok lah. Uh, you know, so uh, so daripada awal, if we can if we can monitor that, then we can control the amount of sugar that we eat in a day. I don't know lah how many of you are worried about pre-becoming diabetic or pre-diabetic, tapi anak-anak kita makin lama dah obese eh. So obesity is uh, those in medicine you understand uh, the the future for Malaysia is obesity. Kita ada apa um, aging problem, 
obesity problem sebab kita ni akan lama-lama akan lebih tua baru mati but we create a lot of burden because kita obese. Ha, bila obese, taklah kita sakit jantung, sakit ni problem semua sekali. So uh, that's why precision medicine needs to come in to actually now uh, detect. So if you can make this in engineering, then the precision medicine uh, job is settled because you dah boleh ada the the uh, nano needles that that goes in actually to detect for the the blood and see the amount of sugar in the blood. They already have done this in Germany. So I, I, I saw this on this guy. So I was wondering whether Malaysia can, can have it done. Thank you, Prof. Very uh, interesting innovation, eh? Alhamdulillah. OK, mm. right. So any other questions from others? OK, it's already 11.43. OK, I think, uh, Prof. Ami, any last question from you? Um, uh, thank you very much, uh, Dato. I think um, for us at RMC, okay. So we um, most probably because we are talking about this collaborative platform, okay. So basically, we will provide this uh, uh, to all the researchers. So we are we are trying to do that, okay, on how to connect all our campuses, because I uh, unlike other others, okay, we see our campus uh, scattered around. But again, I will see the model how USM works so well, because even though the uh, medical campus is actually in Kubang Kerian, mm. okay, all the other way around, jauh daripada yeah. the main campus. Yeah. <laughs> Tapi kebanyakan kita punya innovation is the marriage between engineering and medicine. Mm. Yeah. Mm. No, that's a big study, If you study there. research also, the marriage between engineering and medicine is the one that produces the highest number of innovation. Okay, so inshallah, hmm. we, we will do that with the team. Okay. Okay, Dr. Lina. Okay, thank you, Prof. Hamid. And um, brothers and sisters, ladies and gentlemen, um, uh, on behalf of uh, the RMC, uh, we would like to... Uh, heartily uh, uh, say our thanks to Prof. Emerita Datuk Datuk Asma Ismail uh, for spending uh, more than one hour with us today explaining to us about uh, 1010 My STIE. All right. And um, I hope all of us are clear in terms of how we can go about uh, coming up with good proposals, innovative with the wow effect, and make sure you put the buzzword. Okay, those are the things among the key things that I pick up from her presentation today. Mm. And uh, I do really hope that we can, you know, I think in all honesty, I think all researchers, when we do something, of course, we want it to benefit the society. Mm. Definitely. I think that is at the, you know, at the back of our mind and at the bottom of our heart, you know, because, because or else, why are we doing it in the first place? Okay. So, um, with that, uh, brothers and sisters, uh, thank you again. And I would also like to thank uh, those who are not from IUM. We noticed that there are a few participants from outside IUM. Thank you for spending your time with us. I hope you also benefit as much as we do from uh, Prof. Dato's uh, talk tonight, uh, today, all right? So Alhamdulillah. And uh, with that, uh, we shall close uh, with Tasbih Kafara and Shatul'an. Yes.